Hola a todos, buenas tardes desde Portugal, de Lisboa. Uh, muchas gracias a Incuna y a toda la equipa por estas jornadas tan buenas, tan bien hechas, en un momento tan complicado, sí, y espero volver a verlos a todos en Gijón en 2001. Um, entonces, yo voy a hacer mi presentación en, en inglés, perdone, pero voy a empezar entonces. Um, so, um, this presentation, the goal is to raise some of the issues that are connected to what we feel are current and urgent needs to document um, industries that are still active, so they are still working. So I will be presenting the case study of the archaeological work uh, that was done at Viarco, uh, a Portuguese pencil factory from the early 20th century that some of you uh, may have heard about, so it's very iconic. So the site, um, so Viarco uh, was actually uh, founded in 1907 uh, and it was later acquired after the war, after the economic crisis, and was then installed in its current location in São João de Madeira in the 1940s. So you can see by the building's architecture, uh, um, you know, an evidence of that period as well. So it is still in active production, it's still making pencils, um, and it's still in the hands also of the family, of the same family. So it has this unique historical character and unique history also connected to it, but is very much alive today. So it is very much aware of the present needs, needs of the present, and it's also looking ahead to the future. So it is very well integrated in the community. It is part of the iconic uh, industrial tourism route of San Juan de Madeira, which you may also have heard about. So it's a very important industrial tourism route. Um, and so it is a key national brand, but it also works to, uh, at a multinational level. So it is a very strong, um, a very strong company, but it has uh, its challenge, of course. So in a sense, we're talking about um, a time capsule. So, but it's a time capsule that is still alive. So um, it kept changing a little bit. It's not too evident, but the change is there and it's coming and it's one of the main challenges that we face. So it's aging methods of production um, are today a challenge for a competitive industry. So, but also we can also note that the owners, because of these older machines, they can actually make products that bigger factories no longer can do. So that is also um, a plus factor in a sense. And we can also consider that health and safety issues are uh, becoming very important as well, since that being up to date to the requirements will demand changes in the layout and setting of the factory. So um, Viarco has maintained this character uh, through over a century. And it's shown its capacity to still be relevant today. But the need to update its machinery and to update its infrastructure is very present. And so we have this challenge. How can archaeological and heritage work actually aid in making the site continue its activities, its continuous its production efficiently, sustainably, but also, in, you know, also by informing the heritage value and the potential uses for this heritage in, in this tourism market or in the heritage market um, of these current assets that the factory has. So how to preserve the past while allowing the factory and the site to continue into the future and become competitive. So that was um, the challenge that we faced. You can see here, um, that um, elements from the first half of the 20th century, like the system of transmissions, like this older machinery that are still on site and still being used, they are now um, living side by side with more uh, recent acquisitions that start to show up in the factory floor. So on the right side, you see one of the most recent machines to enter the factory. And you can see that it, in a sense, it visually clashes with what uh, we have um, you know, on the rest of the factory. So, but these machines, uh, from the archaeological perspective or um, from the heritage perspective, they may seem to not fit, but they are essential for the company to continue to be efficient, to, com to continue to be competitive. So uh, those things have to live together. 
And so we developed this project, which was made um, with the owner of IARC, with the City Council of São João da Madeira, with the National Association of Industrial Archaeology, and with the new University of Lisbon. And so we anchored this project in two key but interrelated areas of action. So in on one hand, we have the archaeological work uh, developed for, for, you know, to allow the understanding and the documentation of the site and um, the site with its tangible and intangible heritage. And then we have the classification or listing process um, to ensure its legal protection um, against future alterations or demolition, which is also always a possibility, as you know, when these factories um, are no longer viable and closed. So to prevent that, classification is also a big part of what we're doing. And so inventory and listing are, according to Portuguese legislation, the two main tools for protection. And so that's also why we are working uh, together um, in that sense. But we also need to consider right, that keeping the site in use is fundamental for preservation. So we were talking here about uh, legal uh, methods of preservation, but we know that um, according to best practice, maintaining the site in use is the way, the best way to preserve it. So we need, we have this opportunity to have the sites continue to be used for the same industry, in the same activity, um, under the same uh, uh, family running uh, the factory. And so it is a, um, a unique opportunity that we have here. So we did this project. Uh, I will show you quickly some parts of the documentation process. Um, so as you know, um, factories and factory sites are always updating and evolving. So it's not common to have uh, this type of documentation uh, process, at least not even systematic as we try to do it in archeology. span So everything was photographed. Everything had a written description. Uh, we did drawings of the machines, of their location in the factory floor. Um, we did interviews with workers, um, current workers and workers that were already retired as well. Um, we did some organization also of some of the um, objects that were um, scattered around and not in use. So we, we did that work also to document it. And we also did some archival analysis. So the factory still has um, a huge part of its archive also in its possession. So it's also um, a, good, a good thing for our work. So you can see here one of the one of the inventory files that we made for one of the objects. So each machine had an individual record file. Um, it includes photography. Um, it also includes, um, you know, relations between objects. But we also documented uh, the site, uh, the structure, the work areas. Um, we did some short videos of the of the machines being used, etc. And so all of these goes into the final report, the final archaeological report. So we have been discovering, um, it has been a surprise, right? I mean, not just because how you, when you enter the site and you see all this machinery and you start to understand more about uh, this, uh, this industry, but also when you are doing the analysis of the, of the machines, which we are doing now, um, not, you know, I'm showing you the pictures of the field work and now we are working all this data. It, open, it opens a, a window to the, also the history of science and technology, um, and it expands the borders uh, beyond Portugal, of course. Um, so here is the example of a machine that came from Japan. So it was to make uh, wax crayons. Um, and so just to say that each machine was also understood with um, other elements that made sense, right? In this, in this, in this case, um, the bowl where the wax was melted, and then the machine to actually make uh, the, the crayon, the, the pencil shape uh, of them. So all the all of it has also included when we could find it all this archival material um, of date of acquisition, uses, etc. And so, um, I, just to I refer I reference these three highlights. Um, so we have we see this unique historical character of the factory. It's undeniable. Um, so we are contacting with machines that have been working since the beginning of the 20th century. So that's a long time for many of them. Um, and uh, we also see a lot of ingenuity because of that. 
So there's a continuous adaptation of the machines. So they are being transformed. Um, so the current owner um, is actually very good at, at doing that, uh, that process. And so it changes them to perform new functions that are needed today, but the machines weren't initially designed to do them. So it overcomes obsolescence and shows a lot of creativity um, and reuse as well. So what you are seeing, what you are seeing here in these pictures um, is a machine to dip um, one of the ends of the pencil in ink, in, in paint. Uh, so for, for, for final, um, for the finishing of the pencil, it is no longer in use. So it has, so they have acquired a more, um, a more recent machine that does it automatically. Um, but it also become, becomes part of an artistic installation. So Viarco is very much connected to the arts as well. Um, and so uh, there's also a new use for this machine. Um, but I also want to speak about this uh, multi multinational dimension that was, um, uh, that came very became very clear on the site when we were doing uh, the research. So we have a machinery or an elements of machines um, from Japan, the United States, uh, Germany, uh, the UK, um, and so we have uh, this. It's a huge variety that we are still discovering as we are writing the report, um, and it's also interesting that. Many of the machines that we have now, they were actually acquired recently. So for those of you in Spain, many of the, um, of the machines that are being used at Viarco now, they were actually acquired when the factories, when the pencil factories from Barcelona, uh, so the factory Alpino, and from Ferrol, so the factory uh, Hispania. Uh, when they closed, Viarco acquired many of these uh, machines, and so um, they are here. And so just on a, a few notes to uh, to end and to promote uh, the discussion, just to say that this project um, is not a traditional archaeological work um, because of the site, of the nature of the site that is still um, uh, that is still working. So it was made with a, with a sustainability mindset. So the future of this activity for the future of active industries requires that we think in terms of sustainability and how heritage um, can help in that. So our proposition is that this process of, um, of study, of listing, uh, of making a, an original musealization of the site is necessary and can actually support the company to ensure its growth, um, to allow for its updated machinery and to promote its econo economic success in this new economy. So it has it, it is a challenge, of course. Um, usually archaeological sites are not uh, in use like this. We had to actually integrate um, what were the schedules of the factory and uh, the machines that were being in, in use at that specific moment, etc., uh, with the needs of research. So we actually went there um, during the um, vacation period of the factory for a short time, and then we 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 manage the, the areas that were being used. Um, so that is a, a challenge, of course, in field work, but it's also very good because we were able to see the machinery working and to ask the people that were working with them details and other aspects. Um, so it was a work of compromise. So to ensure that the site, of course, maintains its authenticity uh, while it updates its technology. Um, but it is, I think, a very important experience today as we talk about uh, community work um, and, and, and we see the needs of heritage. In, well, we, it's important that we have these opportunities to discuss and making experiences in trying to adjust and bring together the requirements of the different stakeholders and the different expectations each of them has. Um, so um, to repeat once again that we, we usually talk about this preservation through records. Uh, it's a big part of arch what archaeologists do, unfortunately. Um, but ultimately, what we have here is a preservation through use. And that use has allowed for the structure and for the machinery uh, to to continue to be alive, to be there very, uh, very much in its original state. Um, and so it is, it is a very rare opportunity. Um, of course, that sometimes this leads to what we can consider to be a lack of authenticity or a lack of originality. So which are, as you know, uh, big words in classification of the sites, but actually this 
this continuous update that has been facing for 100 years um, is part of its originality, it's part of its character. So maybe we need to also rethink how we look at these concepts under the light of this continuous use and continuous update of the factories. So um, thank you so much uh, for, for your presence. Um, I'll leave some links here for more information. If you're interested, let me know if you have any questions. I will, you will have the, the, the paper to discuss it further. And if you have any questions, please just let me know. And so I think that's it. <laughs>